Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Rolling Stories, a HR business podcast brought to you by Rolling Aries. And today, we're very happy and fortunate to have a new guest with us today, Victoria Bethlehem, uh, to discuss with us about her journey in the HR space. Uh, Victoria, thank you so much for coming onto the show. Thank you for having me, Adrian. Great to be here. Previously, you were in a large, mature multinational company in the professional services space and then moving into a startup, a tech startup in the early stage growth space, I would assume. Could you share with us and talk more about this transition? How was that for you and how different has the has it been for you throughout this period of time? Yeah, well, it was a very um, specific change that I was looking to make in my career. As you noted, I had been in the multinational corporate environment for over 20 years. And um, it was a cognitive decision to go and do something that was the complete opposite of that. I like a challenge. Uh, I like uh, being stretched and taken outside my comfort zone. And, uh, you know, be careful what you wish for, because that's exactly what I got making that (laughs) move. So yeah, it was um, it was entirely by choice, and I guess you could say it was a calculated risk that I was comfortable taking because you go from something that is very established, has longevity, history, and I guess a perceived sustainability to something that is new, being built, uh, therefore doesn't have the traction in the marketplace. Uh, and and as a result, you are taking that calculated risk that I spoke of. But uh, it's it's played out well for me, and I have no regret. Awesome, lovely to know that. And could you shed some light for the audience who may be interested to know not just the differences between your role back in MNC versus where you are right now, but perhaps I'm also certain there are some similarities across. Perhaps let's touch on the differences first. How does it really differ across these two different kind of? company's type? Yeah, it's a good question. So the thing about going into an MNC is that typically the function is largely already established. That's not to say that uh, in that environment, you're not bringing about change, transformation, uh, and what have you. But but there is a level of that function that is well established, and I dare say a team that is delivering that. In the startup environments I've worked in, uh, I was the first HR higher in one of them and in the other it was a very lean uh, generalist team that i then needed to build out and go deep into the area of specialization so i think fundamentally that's the biggest change that you initially experience when making that change conversely in the more established environment you possibly have less ability to influence the longer term strategy at the onset of joining. Whereas in the startup and, and scale up environments, you are the one creating that strategy as you are building the team, building the function and building the capacity to deliver. And that's incredibly appealing. The third thing I would say is that the pace of change and implementation in the startup environment is so fast. You know, I often joke, although I'm being Uh, somewhat serious when I say this, you know, you discuss something on a Monday, you take a decision on a Tuesday and you're enacting it on a Wednesday. In the uh, MNC world, you know, it can be six months that you're putting together business cases, awaiting for approvals of the various channels of command and and all for good reason. Um, However, that obviously slows down the ability to make a direct impact. And that I found, have found incredibly exciting in in the startup world. So I guess the key return is really being able to shape the organization while it's still at a very early stage. Would you be able to share some examples of the things that HR or your department or yourself have been able to influence to a large degree versus something similar in your previous organization in which may not be that apparent or may not have such a material impact? Yeah, absolutely. When you're building a startup, the initial core function of the HR team is that of talent acquisition. And as any HR uh, specialist or executive leader would know when building a team, you need to sell that value proposition to them. You know, that employee value proposition, which is all about why join, why stay. Now, when you're creating something from scratch, you don't have an EVP, right? You you don't have a team to be able to say, this is what our people currently experience. 
because you're starting with a blank canvas. So creating a sense of what we will be, what we are becoming, what you will be a part of is an integral part to your talent acquisition strategy. A company's values, right? A lot of people need to understand upfront what that is and, and rightly so because they are the cornerstone of an organization's culture. In both organizations, you know, I have been a part of either creating that value proposition from scratch or educating and communicating and building that into a non-existing value proposition. So those are, or well, that is, I should say, uh, an example of where in a startup environment, you really are getting to the nuts and bolts of what it means to be a member of the organization when you're creating those those pieces that you take for granted are long established, long recognized and widely spoken about in a, a multinational. And I'm certain before you even took a leap of faith, I'm, I'm sure you may have some perspective, perhaps some preconceived notion of how it may be like to operate within a startup environment. Has any of those became myth that has been dispelled through your experience and time in the startup? And are there any misconceived notion that you may like to also address with the audience out there that may have some stereotypical expectation of how a startup should actually operate? Well, actually, I think it's the reverse of what you just said. I think that the things that you hear, I can confirm, are absolutely true. That, that we've already spoken about the pace of work and change and, and the decision-making process. We've spoken about, you know, the challenge of trying to do so many things simultaneously because they're all needed from the get go to in, or, in order to achieve the the longer um, the longer term goals. Uh, so those things that I expected, I found to be absolutely the case. Probably the one misnomer that I have identified and observed regularly is the ease at which people think they can make the transition from being in an MNC to a startup. I think that most people assume that they can because I've I've dealt with change, I've been on transformation projects, I've built up teams, I've managed projects in a bigger organization. I'll just transfer those kind of skills to a startup. Actually, what you really need more than anything is that hands-on attitude. So if you come from an environment where you've got lots of people who do things for you, being able to get in and do that with your team is essential. The ability to deal with ambiguity, making decisions when you only have 50% of the information, there simply isn't time to get the remaining data points. You've got to be able to deal with that ambiguity and make good judgment calls quickly. And I think, uh, I know it's highly overused, the term of agility, but that agility um, skill um, and mindset, agile mindset is essential coming into the startup world. And I have found that those three things, the areas that people that are trying to make the transition and find it challenging, that's what they struggle with the ambiguity, the agility requirement, that hands-on approach and, and building the thing, the infrastructure that they would have ordinarily had in prior life. So that's probably where the misnomer is, is that everyone can do it. Right. And within a startup environment, I would also imagine it could be in the form of a hockey stick growth when it comes to not just top line revenue but also the headcount within an organization yes. and as many different companies would know uh, employee company culture is the glue that really holds everything together how different and how challenging it may be to really emphasize on culture building uh, between a mature multinational company versus a high growth startup well, I don't think culture is any less important in, in one or the other or more important than one or the other. I think I think you rightly said it. Culture is the glue that pulls it all together. People need to feel where a, a sense of where they fit in, right? Um, what is the landscape? What is the environment? What's expected of them, uh, both from an output point of view and also from a, a behavioural perspective. And, and the latter is really where I think the values come into play. And in any environment I've worked in, be that an MNC or a startup, it's always played a critical part. I think that in a startup environment, you are stressing it uh, in multiple scenarios and at all levels of the organization because when you have a team of 10 and you suddenly have a 15, you know, that's grown by 50% in <laughs> two weeks, right? So it's very important at the 
um, particularly at that developing stage, to really ensure that everybody recognises that they contribute to the culture. It's not owned by HR, it's not owned by the leaders. They may be the conductors of it, um, but everybody contribute at the end of the day to building that culture. Uh, and I think it's every time you pull the team together on a town hall, it's every time you give feedback, uh, when you talk about you know, the next progress, those, uh, the next progress step, always weaving in those values and, and what they stand for so that they're both internal and externally uh, applied um, is absolutely critical. And I, I think it, everybody plays a part in that. And certainly that's been what's fundamental to particularly where I'm at the moment, the culture being as strong as it is. Can you share more about the biggest success as well as failures that you may have experienced in your current role as a CHRO in a startup? One of the biggest lessons that I've learned is that as the startup organization grows both by way of the product service offering, the market share take up, there's a natural desire for the business to then add more headcount. We're growing so fast, we need to respond to the market, let's add headcount. And you have to be really selective about where you invest those investor dollars when it comes to headcount. And I think, you know, what we've seen with the the large players, the Googles, the Amazons, the Spotify's, uh, TikTok, et cetera. They have all hired at a rapid rate over the last few years. And it's now come back to them of, you know, needing to revisit that. You know, do we really need as many people? And, and in the startup world, I think we've been guilty of the same thing. In other words, growing too fast, too soon. Um, so that's one lesson that I would I would take from this experience is really reviewing your rate of headcount growth against where the market is is growing at. Um, the su success in particular that I I feel most proud of I think is is the adaptability because you are constantly evolving as an organisation, um, the team, the organisation, the, uh, the the priorities, um, the go to market plan. It's continually evolving um, and at a very fast pace. So you have to be able to adapt and adopt um, in line with that. And that can become quite exhausting um, uh, emotionally and mentally. Uh, however, it's also incredibly exciting. So I think uh, my ability to be able to do that has been uh, very rewarding. And, and with that, thank you so much for your time today to help us better understand your experience transiting from MNC to a startup and also some of the things that people who may be sitting on a fence should possibly consider in order to make it a better situation and better consideration. Thank you so much. You're welcome. 